Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So basically in today's video I'm going to be attempting to build my own carp, um, lift carp or, or car operations panel. So I've got the rest of it coming, i.e. the metal and the wire. Um, Royal Mail was on strike unfortunately so you know that's a little bit delayed. But this will be my first time working with metals so it might come out really good or it might come out really bad, but I've got all of the drawings, measurements and everything to get everything up to scale. Um, so I'm kind of going to be documenting the process of attempting to build one basically. So this is the first bit, which is buttons um, from Dewhurst, which is what I'm going to be filming today, which will basically be uh, building up the buttons and getting them all ready basically for um, the metal to arrive, which might hopefully come tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record building one button up, then I'll time-lapse building them all up. So if we open the bag, in here we've got these, which are spacers. Um, which I don't think throws one on floor, um, which I don't think we'll need, but so we've got them trying to make sure everything stays on camera. Um, got some wiring blocks, well, way goes, which are kind of joined together for um, wiring it up later. Sorry if you guys can hear like a lot of heavy breathing. I'm doing this quite late at night and I'm shattered. So I'm just trying to find a comfy place as well. Um, then obviously we've got these, which are the housings. The ones with the red tops are for the actual call buttons. Um, if it's both green, then it's... Um, for the lift alarm so obviously there should be six buttons in here here's the lift alarm one so obviously it's got green on both ends then that's the bag of bolts i was on about so oh there's the other one i was, I was like i'm sure i'm sure i have more than that uh, so, I should say that's doors closed. So that's ground floor, second floor, alarm. Oh, first floor. Doors close. Now we did actually spot something quite interesting about these buttons, and that's I've never personally noticed this, but that's the surround for a ground floor one because the buttons are actually slightly bigger, slightly bigger, um, and thicker than the normal ones. So notice that they actually have they're like slightly thicker. I'm just going to move these out of the way. This isn't very organised, hence this bit's going to be a bit iffy. So, let's organise all these. Yeah, this is recorded quite late at night, because... I don't know why, I just kind of remembered last minute. Oh, crap, I do need to uh, go and get this bit out of the way ahead of everything arriving tomorrow just so i don't kind of do everything at once now one thing is as you might have seen in a previous video the led module for these which are compact two buttons is a 24 volt so because it's a smaller button, I am going to attempt to use it with the Memcom and hope that it all works out. 
Um, if not, I might have to break the design of this cop by changing the alarm button back in um, thingy out to a compact free because I only have an LED module which is 12 volt for the compact free. So, oh, of course, one goes the wrong way. There's all the things. So, obviously, you've got the back pressel, I think it was called, the surround, and the LEDs. So what I'll do is I'll show you um, building one up and then obviously I'll time lapse building the rest up. So we'll do the alarm button. So take the back. I always make sure the Dewhurst logo is at the top. So put that in and then literally take your surround and push it in until it clicks. Then take your LED module, make sure the 24 volt is below the Dewhurst sign and literally push it in there you go make sure it's nice and firm in there and that's literally it one button built so that's one done so now what we'll do is I'll time that's building the rest and uh, yeah I'll see you guys after the time lapse So as you guys can see, all the buttons are now built up. Um, alarm button, doors closed, doors open, ground floor, first floor, second floor. So the kind of layout up we're going for is like this. So that's the kind of layout we're going for on the uh, metal. So next stage really now, is waiting for the metal to arrive and once the metal arrives then it's cutting them out we're cutting the 35 millimeter holes out for the buttons the only thing that i'm not doing properly really is i'm going to be gluing the bolts to the um metal just for a nicer effect on the other side um yeah, that's all, all really for this little part. So the next part will be cutting the metal, which I'll basically do the next part when it arrives, which is in basically a few seconds for you. So I'll see you guys when the metal arrives. Right, welcome to the next part, which is where the metal's arrived. So you're looking at the bottom part, where the buttons are going to be. I've got my drawings ready to go. Um, that's the actual full-sized piece, so compare it to a washing up bowl that's in here. So essentially now, the first process to cut in the holes is... Once I'm down on the floor, basically having a look at the schematic I've made with the measurements on and then measuring that up to the, um, oh, once again I'm recording this late at night and my brain's just not there, to the scale, uh, oh god, to scale drawing, as you can see I've punched little holes in the centre of each um, part. So what I'll do is I'll basically measure it, put it on there. That's the first time I've actually seen it on there. I'm quite impressed that that's quite to scale, actually. Um, then I'll obviously use a Sharpie to put dots through them holes. I'm then going to use the drill bit to do little pilot holes. And then we'll obviously put the Bosch bit on. Um, to do the proper hole saw, which is 35 millimeter. Yes, I know you can do it like that and just go straight into it, but personally, just to double check everything, I want to do it separately, 
just to be sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, measure all this off camera, work out where it needs to be, tape it down. Then um, I'll hop back on and the next part should be, fingers crossed everything's worked out doing all the planning, it'll be the drilling. And I'll rearrange the camera so you guys can definitely see what's going on. Right, I'll see you guys in the next clip. So what I've just been doing for um, the markup is, as you can see, I've put the template onto the thing with some duct tape. Um, so what I've just been doing is I've measured, I'm measuring that from the side to the cutout position, it is 15 centimeters, which is 150 millimeters. So this is 300 millimeter wide and obviously 300 divided by two is 150 to give you the center. So as you can see, uh, let's face it, you're not gonna see it, but that's on 15 centimeters. So I'm happy with where this template is. So now what I'm gonna do is, excuse me if my big head gets in the way, but, just put a little dot in the center of each one. Right, I'll just do a little bit more scribbling on that one. Right, so I think that's through. So now what we'll do is peel this up. Yep, and there's my little holes. Holes? Templates. So I'm just gonna quickly peel this um, duct tape around the edges in case I ever need the template again slash want to use it for whatever. Now comes the part that you might have all been waiting for, but I've been Dreading, mainly because I've never worked with metal before. So, there's not a lot I can do really, other than just go for it and give it my best shot. So, I just want to make sure that everything is centered there. So, yep, I'm going to trust that that's centered. Right, so uh, <laughs> I guess this is where the fun begins. So, okay, so let's hold the metal. First hole, not gonna lie, it was slightly scary. So, that's the first one done. <laughs> Quite impressed it went through fairly easily but I suppose that's just because it's aluminium but my plan was for this is obviously it's my first time working with metal as I've said multiple times um so I wanted to buy this thin stuff for £12.75 purely because if I mess it up it's not going to matter price wise whereas if I go and buy say £30 three millimeter stick steel then obviously the price is going to shoot up drastically and very quickly if i mess that up price is going to start to matter so we'll swap to a time lapse i'll get the holes cut and we'll jump back in before when i do the first hole saw itself so i'll see you guys shortly in the next clip So, as you guys can see, I've drilled all the holes out. Okay, so there's all the holes cut. That's it on the other side. A little bit scratched up, but not being funny, it did come quite scratched up. So, I guess afterwards we'll just have to give it a good polish, but anyway, that's just how things be. So, now comes a scary bit.
all sort of. Right, so let's do this centre one first. So, right, here we go. Oh, that didn't start well, did it? So this isn't going very well at all. Okay, so I think it's the issue of you need to go in more with the speed straight away, like less hesitant, if you will. So, right, that's the first hole cut then. So, the only thing that would be wise to do now, really, is for me to pause the video and quickly go and get a Dewhurst button and we'll test fit it. So, give me one second. Right, I will admit I am really nervous, but moment of truth. Okay, so it does fit. Right, let me just flip it over so you guys can see. There we go. So we've got a little bit of leeway from vibrations and stuff, but to be honest, it doesn't even, <laughs> it doesn't really look bad. So what I'm gonna do now is do the rest of them. Um, but obviously trying to stick to the tactics that I say of just going with speed. So I'll do, a time lapse again and then we'll catch up after the time lapse. Right, so not gonna lie, that was bloody nerve wracking. But there we go. Some fairly decent cuts there. I'm quite happy with it. This top one hasn't come out as in line as I would have liked, which is kind of set my OCD off a little bit there. But I suppose the best thing we could do now is probably get all of the boxes out and go with a little setup. So let's bring this bit of wood closer. Help if we do it the right way, wouldn't it? So. Yeah, this is going to go so well. I can see it. Right, let's attempt this. I think we all know how trying to do this is going to work. Right, now what I want to do. Okay, <laughs> I guess the number two just didn't want to uh, sit in its pretzel. Pretzel? Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it as pretzel. Oh, yeah, I can't, I can't see this one. Oh, hang on, we might have it one. This might actually go well. Trying to do it like this. I mean, none of the buttons are going to be straight doing it like this, but this will give a good enough gist of what it's going to look like.
right. Let's bring the camera over. There we go. So that's what it's going to look like. So uh, that's it for this part. The next part will be cutting the speaker grill out. Then there's other bits like putting the bolts on and then mainly the wiring. So um, I'll see you guys in the next little bit. So this is just a quick little um, bit, but essentially what I'm doing here is the first bit of the electrics, which is creating these jumper cables. Um, so I've just soldered this one, so I haven't put the end on, but essentially they're just jumper cables. So what they'll do is on the buttons, they'll basically jump from there to there or to there. I can't remember which one's which, but essentially it's just a jumper. So obviously you'll have um, live in live out and then live into the um, LED and then negative out so when you press the button essentially all that will happen is it will just put the light on for a short second the reason I'm actually doing it so you just press it and it goes off straight away is because I thought to myself well when I lift out of service that tends to be what they do you press the light and it just goes off straight away so I thought well by doing that, it gives the effect that the lift's not in service, which obviously it's not because, you know, it's not installed in a lift. So yeah, this is just a quick um, video. I'm not gonna be doing a time-lapse or anything, but this is just a quick bit to show the jumpers that I'm making. All right, so as you can see, I've made all the jumper cables up now. Um, so there's one for the door close, door open, and alarm, but I did realize that that's going to be a spare one because I don't actually need one for the alarm and then the red ones will be for the floor button so zero one and two um as for the buttons I did just realize that they're going to be wired slightly backwards because obviously from what I remember for a lift they use this which is normally open so obviously that would leave the button lit up all the time until someone presses it then it'll basically just go off for a second so what I'm gonna have to do is wire it from the bottom, which will be normally closed. So it comes on when you press it only. So that's one thing that we're gonna have to do is wire it backwards. Otherwise the LED is just gonna be permanently on until someone presses it. So that's one modification we have. So basically what these um, jumpers are for is so, you'll have positive, um, say you'll have positive in here, and then obviously you've got the positive for the LED module up there. Say that that's the right one. And essentially, let's try and do this one handed. Oh, you'll put that one on there, and then that one like that, to jump it, to connect it. So then you'll have positive in, and negative off. So then, as I said before, it will just light up once when you press it, and as soon as you let go, it'll stop, and that will be the same for every button. So the next part is, we'll be soldering all of the other spade connectors onto the 12 core cable. So that's the next bit, and I'll see you guys in the next clip. Right guys, so now the cable for it has arrived so we're going to be doing the wiring up i don't know if you guys have seen in the last clip depends where this clip falls but basically the speaker mesh didn't really go as planned as doing it at home um so i have ordered a new piece of metal i might be getting that cut by a company or not um i'm not too sure yet but basically that hasn't arrived yet nor have i found a company to get it properly machined by 
So for now, we'll be using this, which is the old sheet, because I'm literally just using it for measurements of where the buttons will go. You can kind of see what I mean by the um, speaker mesh went wrong. I just wasn't completely happy with it. So anyway, we're just going to use it as a um, template for today. So we've got all the buttons here. Sorry if the camera does get quite wobbly because it is kind of on an awkward bit because I decided, you know, stand up for this part of the video because it makes it easier. So what I'm going to do now is basically just quickly put all of my buttons in place. Um, the only button that doesn't really need wiring up is this one. Now the reason for that is... Um, in my other videos, you guys will have seen me use this cable for the alarm. So basically, we're going to be using this um, one again for the interface to the Memcon. Purely just because it's easier. Um, so basically what will happen is this will do its alarm activated light and the connection to the Memcon. Then this is the new fresh cable we've just bought, which is a 12 core 5 meter. So that will basically do all of the um, buttons, their lights, and it will do a permanent light for the alarm button here. So what I'm basically going to be doing in this video is cutting this cable to size, but in a nice size that it will um, kind of all be neat. And then when the new um, sheet of metal arrives, we'll basically cable manage it all and do it all really nice so this is going to be um, interesting to do because the camera is kind of just in front of me and I'm just kind of here with my hands so I haven't worked with this kind of cable before it is shielded so it might be a little bit hard to do but what I'm thinking about doing is so cable will come down like that and then loop around to do them buttons so probably easiest way to do this is to get a length of it and right so i need a little bit more on that a little bit less it's all fun and games doing this actually no i'm gonna give it a little bit more actually i'm just gonna give it that extra bit but a fair amount actually so yep that'll probably do it so I'm gonna cut it just here so like I said I haven't worked with this cable before it is fairly thick because of its armoring so the only issue I'm gonna have is it is flicking around a lot so it might hit the tripod like that right okay so let me just okay so it does seem quite easy to cut actually i'm just gonna do this a little bit off camera just to make it a little bit easier so just give me a second this is really easy to cut with a Stanley knife, which is quite nice. Right. Oh, so that's that bit done. So I'm going to give this a tug. Make sure that when you are pulling this off, because it is a long stretch, hold the braid in, not the sleeve in. Otherwise you'll notice you'll start to pull it out of this end. I thought I'd mention it just because that's what I've just started to do. So hold your braid in. And slowly, piece by piece, inch by inch. There we go. That's the tube enough. So now my next mission is work how this okay, this braid in here is quite nice actually. Oh look at that. <laughs> Straight down to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is probably just gently cut through that with a Stanley knife. So, I'll just have to give me a second to cut through it all. Right, 
Right, that's the last little, oh no it's not. So I've cut through it now, I'm gonna find a way to neaten this a little bit up in a minute. But there we go, that's the braiding off it. Now we're left with this plastic, which is just to protect the nice cables. They are really nice high quality. I'd highly recommend this um, company. I'm not sponsored or anything by them, but they are a really good company and they've got some really good prices. So they're des um, I get most of my cables, to be honest, I get them all from, apart from a few. And they're from a company called Designer Cables. I'll put their website link in the description. That's where this cable's from and the alarm cable you guys seen. So this one, um, this 12 core one, is a 12 core shielded one. I can't remember the thickness if I'm completely honest. Um, but you guys have just seen how nice and easy they are to strip. So this one was £15 and any orders over £10 are free. Um, free? No, they're not. Free postage, sorry. So, obviously, because mine was £15, it was free postage, which was quite nice. So, um, what, what I'm going to do to tidy it up now I've got the plastic off is just gently kind of give it a nice little push back in. As so. One says that to be easy. Right, so now what I'm going to do is basically put it... Uh, actually, no. Wouldn't it make more sense to first work all the pairs out? Yes, it would. So, split all the pairs off. So now what I'm going to do is... These 12 cores, I'm going to break them off into two pairs each, which will obviously go to each of the buttons. But at the same time, it's going to be the case of trying to untangle them while I pick them out. Which is going to be a bit of a faff. And then what I'll probably do is find somewhere to secure the cables to temporarily. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work, well, untangle all of the pairs, get them into pairs and so they're all nice and neat. And then after that, I'll start recording again when we'll start working out button sizes and everything like that. So I'll see you guys in the next clip. Right, so I've got all the pairs separated. I've secured it, as I said I would. Um, so now, essentially... All that's left to do is work out what pairs we're going to allocate to what buttons. So I'm just going to pick them randomly. Um, do you know we're not? I'm going to go from the sides. So we'll go for this top one, we'll go blue and green. So now what we'll do is essentially pull all these cables aside. I'll say they run like that. So then like that. Oh bloody hell stop spinning. Oh everything's moving. Then to get up and over. I'll say about there. Remove the access. Essentially then that gives you enough to then solder cables on and yeah. So we'll break into a time lapse now because I assume you guys don't want to watch me slowly cut all these wires. So yeah, we'll break into a time lapse and I'll catch up with you guys after the time lapse. Right, so as you guys can see, I've cut them all to size. It is actually looking quite nice. So, um, 
Obviously I've got all the flicks, the cable runs and everything. So what I'll do now is I'll double check all the sizes off camera, cut them down to any imperfections that I find. Then the next bit you'll see will be a time lapse of soldering all of the spade connectors onto the connectors. You guys have seen me do it before, so I won't keep you guys to watch how you do it. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to cut these all down off camera, make sure that everything's perfect, and then we'll jump into a time lapse of soldering all the ends. So as you can see all the spade connectors have now been soldered on. So now the next step is to take the end of the cable and put crimps on it so it will fit into these wagos which I've glued together which will act as joiners just for the uh, power. So I'll do a time lapse of the rest of it now. Right, so as you guys can see here, all the ends are now crimped. So essentially what I'm gonna do now is look at two pairs and then put them into their individual wagos. So basically, so just to demonstrate, so here you've got blue and green. So then I know blue and green is done. So then on the crimped side, which you guys can't see right now, but I'll get blue and green. And then essentially, I'll put blue into one side. And obviously green into the other side. So what I'll do now is I'll quickly do a time lapse of me doing that. And then yeah, we'll go from there. Right, so as you can see, the end with all the power will connect um, where they all merge together is now done with one extra space and then the other extra space will be for the power input and obviously the side for the buttons is done. We're not going to test them just yet, so the next clip will be attaching the bolts um, to attach the buttons to hopefully the new panel with the new speaker mesh. And then obviously after that we'll do testing. So we're reaching the end of the build slowly. And I'll see you guys in the next clip. Right, so as you can see, I've skipped here, but I'm not going to film this bit because it's quite difficult and figure, uh, picky to do. But I'm gluing the button mounts on, which um, 
yeah, I could stud weld them, but I don't have a stud weld, so I'm going to glue it. Um, over here, as you can see, the um, cop speaker grill is now done. Um, so that's the other side of it. Essentially, all I've done with that is drilled a hole either end, filed it through, tried to make it the best that I can through my um, through doing it at home with just files. It hasn't come out like the best, but you know, at the end of the day, it's homemade. It's not perfect. I obviously glued a pre-made grill over it. So anyway, I'm gonna get to doing this, and then the next bit should be mounting the buttons and doing the wiring harness. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next clip. Right, so as you can see, all the mounts are now on. It's finally time to bring it all together and start putting things together. So I've just done a quick test fit off camera. I did notice some of these are a little bit too big. Some of them are a bit off, but it'll do. <laughs> you know, it's the best of my ability that I can do um, by hand. So what we're gonna do is start putting buttons on now getting them to sit the best we can and then obviously putting some bolts down to uh, hold it on and hopefully we'll have a fairly good finish hopefully the buttons also look straight on the other side there are some of them are probably going to be most certainly off a little bit but it's the best I can do with my uh, poor skills um, I do have some spacers which I might mutate and cut to make them um, a little bit less loose if any of them are loose. But like I said, I'm doing this the best that I can with um, tools that I've just got at home without having to buy anything extortionate. Basically stuff that you could just go and get any day really. Um, obviously apart from buttons and stuff. They might be a bit more tricky for you to source. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> that's pretty much it. Now, there hasn't really been a lot to update. Obviously, you guys are aware of the thing. So that's uh, ground floor. <laughs> that's what I mean about the uh, spacing. But I'll sort that out off camera. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go into a time lapse of installing all the buttons then off camera I'll sort all the adjustments out so uh, I'll see you guys in a little while right so off camera I've just done the adjustment to the zero you might be able to see this little thing out here um, essentially what I had to do was one side where I've glued it is bigger than the other so what I've had to do is just get a bit of cardboard fold it up and put it under there it's annoying but at the end of the day you got to do what you do to make it look good um, yeah on the other side some of them aren't all like perfect straight but they're straight enough to say yeah it's all right <laughs> um, Obviously, I wouldn't go around recommending this for uh, a lift install <laughs> anytime soon, but it's uh, certainly been a fun project. So now it's time for the wiring harness. So let's pick a place for this to go. So if the first one's there, I'm going to say here I think I think that's probably going to be the best option uh, yeah I'll do it from the other side because it's just better um, i trying to think now so if I do this as the last button what an idea what we'll do is we'll wire it up on cable. I'm just putting them on lightly because I don't want to go breaking the glue now. Um, pressure I neaten that up. 
But now work out how, where does the cable need to be for them to run neatly? So I'm gonna say, for these to run nice and neat, it's gonna have to go there. Yeah, I'd say about here. So what we'll do then so we'll stick one of those there. Okay, we'll tie through. First bit done. So now we can start the actual wiring. So I'm gonna unwire this bottom button just because most of them are gonna be tangled up. So what I wanna do now is flick all the other side and then give each button its own sticky pad, one of these, which is obviously then gonna give it more, I don't know how to put it, um, make it neat, neater, neat, no, oh, I don't know, so, stick one there, obviously we'll work out cable one for this, so, essentially that's what we'll do, obviously there'll be other ones to go down here to make that neat, then that'll get cable tied to there and it'll flick over there. So what I'll do now is I'm going to switch to a time lapse um, and yeah, we'll get to it. Right, so most of it has now all been nicely cable managed. Here's to up there. Power supply that I built is here. Have you may notice some buttons are missing <laughs> with some standoffs. As, as you've seen, they are literally just screws with no heads glued on. And unfortunately, as you may have noticed, I did wire some of the buttons wrong. And in the process of pulling the spade connectors off, Unfortunately, they did snap off. So, 24 hours again for the glue to dry. And, and hopefully, by tomorrow afternoon, it'll all be dry. Um, the mem, you guys will see it when the mem come and everything's hooked up to it. And you guys see it all fully working. So, I'll see you guys after all that's been completed. Right, the time's finally here. Let's test it, take the film off, and let's be happy this is complete. So, this is the final end product. Um, here's the speaker grill. It looks a bit weird angle, let me adjust the tripod. So, there's the speaker grill. There has been two adjustments to it, so let me take you through them. As you can see, there is now a speaker on the back. I need to be careful with this tripod because it's extended. Over there is the Memcom microphone and that is also the Memcom speaker. So the Memcom doesn't actually need to be anywhere near the cop. In fact, for this video, it's over here with that big board that you see there. That is the power supply that I made for the button um, LEDs. That is a custom Memcom wiring harness loom box that I made 
And obviously you've got the Memcom itself and then you've got all the power cables running over to it. And obviously down here, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but here's where all the buttons are. And how all that came out with its nice loom. Um, there's a top view of where the microphone and the speaker is. So today we finally get to take the film off. And you guys also get to see it powered off, on. Um, before you guys ask, that's a different project. This is um, a Semi Logic, which I'm trying to get working. Need to get some fuses. Don't don't dig me in the comments. But this is the Semi Logic that I'm working on. It does have a blown chip as well, so that's why if you hold that fuse in, that just stays lit up. But hopefully at some point, the Semi Logic might get hooked up to this. But. That's another project for another time, because that could take a very long time, just as long as this. So, let's start then. Let's power up the Memcom and the um, cop. You might hear a really loud beep, so if you've got headphones on, I suggest you just turn it down, because I don't know how loud this beep's going to be, but it will be the Memcom powering up. So, left alarm button's got its light. Right, so... Let's start having some fun with it. Let me move the tripod a little bit closer. So these buttons I've made so they just literally come on and go out when you press it, or as soon as you let go. So as you can see, they're all nicely walk work, walking. They're walking. They're all nicely working. It all looks really nice. So now, the bit that actually does something, rather than it's just a decoration, the alarm button. This should set off an audible lift alarm, and after three seconds of holding it in, it should change to a bright colour, and it should then tell the Memcom to dial out to an emergency. So, let's give it a go. Please remain calm. The alarm Ooh. has been activated, and lift services are about to be contacted. So it worked. It all came out of the cot. The only issue was... The uh, light didn't light up. So, let me quickly see where I've gone wrong. And then we'll be back. And I'll start recording again. Because I think I know where I've gone wrong. I think I've crossed terminals over. So give me one second and I'll be back. Right, so this time, now that's fixed, let's drop the tripod down. And we'll take a closer look at what actually happens there. So when you press the alarm button in, giving it power. <laughs> Sorry, I had to have to work on it, but giving it power. Please remain calm. There we go. The alarm has been activated and lift services are about to be contacted. Give it a second and it should try and dial out, but it doesn't have a phone line attached to it currently. So, um, there we go. So then, let's go and reset the Memcom. And that light should go out there. We, um, no, didn't do it in time. Light should go out, there we go. Right, so let's have a quick chat about what's going on here with all these cables then. So you've got this PSU here, which is obviously taking 240 volts in changing it out to 24 volts which is then sending it out through the i think it's 12 core <laughs> off the top of my head which then feeds off to power the buttons what happens on the button end is there's a bridge from the switch to the leds so then what it does is the switch joins together when you push it turns the led on let go obviously turns off then you've got the memcom here the other plug will be power for memcom this is the custom made box where the button comes for the um memcom this also houses the alarm up there the um button's widening down there with that bit of white tape um in a real life scenario obviously that button the alarm would be outside here but it's 110 decibels and I don't fancy it down my ears. All of these cables, they're just from the Memcom wire and harness. 
like go up to this because there's a lot more that can go into this like phone lines relays rem stuff and stuff like that and um, then obviously you've got these two cables and um, this one's the microphone for the cop for if you're actually using it this one is the speaker cable and these both link under this cover up here so if i just give this a lift up there you go that's where they link to the memcom that cover is a little get to get back on so that's all of its operating equipment really so to be honest you don't have to have a memcom obviously you won't have the feature of it going bright but right i'm trying to think of a way where i can get this now where you can see the film get taken off scary thing is i don't know whether things are going to go wrong when this film comes off so um let's try and very carefully take this film off it's a lot harder to take off than i actually thought it would be i'm not going to lie right, i'm going to try and just gently pull down that. one of the things that um, okay <laughs> One of the things that I would love to change, if I could, and I had the skills to, is how flimsy this metal is. As you can see, it's bending a lot and moving as I'm doing this. Um, I would like to use some thicker metal or maybe make some reinforcements. There are some little changes that aren't really worth recording that are probably going to come afterwards. Like... The only way that I could get studs for the buttons, it would be that I um, basically got some screws, ground the head off of the screws, um, and then glued them on. Um, so what I might do afterwards is maybe put a thin bead of glue around the buttons to just kind of give it that secondary reinforcement, if you know what I mean. Um, um, flimsiness wise what I might do with that is either reinforce it by putting some thicker metal on the back or I might now this is a big might I don't think I will but I might build it a back box but the option of um reinforcing it with some metal does seem more applicable to be honest because what i might do at some point is mount it on this board here and move the lift logic over so this will be like a demo board and then you'll have like lift logic demo car and then like what would be inside the lift car demo kind of thing i think that's probably the best option there are <laughs> i've just noticed there's a big mark there where it got twatted and um, this um, rip. Oh, there's the first button out of it. I will admit one horrible thing is it's now revealing um, the buttons aren't as flush as I assumed they was. One of the other things that might change eventually is I might get a custom plaque put on it. That final moment. There we go. One brand new. Sorry about all that crunching, I just probably went down the microphone. Here we have it. One brand new. Pretty much fully functioning, custom built car operations panel. So <laughs> let me just twist the tripod to lock it. And um, before we conclude this very long video, we'll uh, have one more look at it. So going from top to bottom, fingerprints, you know, that's always a good thing. I do need to do mounting holes to make it look proper. Um, about mounting it on this board, what I might do is just put two like latch screw kind of things, something like that. That will just latch it onto place there. 
This side, it'll just be drilled into some wood to support it, like I said, and then it'll have a hinge so you can kind of like unclip it and then like hinge it open. So obviously speaker grill, let's have a quick chat about that. So the way that I'd done this was I put a scratch on it on the other side, drilled a hole, a big hole, screwed another, screwed another hole there, screwed another hole, my, my English is just dead today, scratched it and drilled another hole and then basically just put loads of little drill holes in the middle, filed across and then filed down and obviously repeated that. Then I glued a mesh on the back. Yes, the metal does look a different shade, but to me, I think it looks cool. And you even got my reflection in it, that's beautiful. So obviously you wouldn't see <laughs> through there on, um, once it's in dark, but that's the damage I was on about, but I think that can be sorted out. These I would like to do with some kind of machine in the future if I could, but obviously I don't have access to one. Um, I'd obviously want to be careful with filing because as you can see that bit got bent a bit. With the buttons, um, I learnt very quickly that you have to hold the hole saw bits very, very still. Otherwise you end up getting this gap here where you end up basically like it kind of wiggles aside and then it kind of fucks it up and makes a massive gap. Um, I'd want a stud welder to put the buttons on properly. Um, I think that's probably about it, obviously other than reinforcing this. But I think that's about it. I'm quite proud of how this turned out. So um, yeah, I think that concludes the video. So just one more time, we'll just quickly go through it and activate the alarm. So here's a close up of it. So you've got button two, oh, one, ground floor oh and i also want to get a green led for that and then you've also got door close door open and alarm button please remain calm the alarm has been activated and lift services are about to be contacted right so we've reset in the memcom I think that just about concludes this entire COP series video, whatever you want to call it. I'm dead proud of how it turned out that this was done with basic hand tools. If you want a list of the tools that were used, they're going to be in the description. So, and parts, parts. Feel free to ask about parts. The buttons will be hard to source most likely, but Feel free to ask and uh, I'll probably put all the parts, listings and stuff like that in the um, description. The microphone might not be in there because that is an Avaya part and I don't know if they sell it. Um, speaker obviously probably won't be in there either because that's just a generic part. But and if, if in like the metal, the grill... Um, hole saws, files, stuff like that. That'll all be in the description. Um, memcoms, you can find on eBay. 24 volt power supplies, you can find on eBay. Um, I won't link the memcom. I can't link that because I made that. Um, if anyone's got any questions about this kind of stuff, i.e. the memcom, what alarms in here, how I made that, um, just ask me on Discord or something. Um, I'll leave my tag in the description. I'll put power supply on there. And obviously the way it goes and... Not the wood, but... <laughs> stuff like that. So, um, yeah. I think that just about concludes this custom cop building video. Um, so, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this extremely long building series. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.